Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here at RSA. It's day four, CUBE's wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We've been here unpacking stories, uh, talking to the most smartest people, the smartest people in the network, uh, partners, customers, suppliers. We've got a great set of, set of two guests here from F5, Michael Rao, Senior Vice President, General Manager of Distributed, Distributed Cloud Platform and Security Services. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Great, Great title there. Brian McHenry, Vice President of Product Management at F5. You get the keys to the kingdom. He's the general manager. Uh, <laughs> networking is a big part of security. Not, I got to say, normally it's the front and center, but now we're hearing platforms here, a lot of discussion around politics. The White House was here, yeah. had some briefings. I saw Microsoft friends in with the White House. Um, security obviously has moved from being a department to like being the thing, and rightfully so, with the network. So we've been saying on theCUBE all week, Network security, the network folks, and security are the core. They're enabling developers, everything, that's all that matters ops-wise. Yeah. You're seeing a lot of reconfiguration. You guys are in the middle of it with a great product that's very cloud friendly, very multi-cloud, super cloud-like. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys are in the center with some great products. So what's, what's your take on, on, on the current state of RSA? Yeah, I mean, the current state of RSA and the customer conversations that we've had is, is that there are more and more customers trying to fall, solve the security problem for their apps and their APIs as they distribute their applications around uh, a variety of different infrastructures. Uh, you know, certainly there are still a lot of private data centers out there, but uh, you know, applications moving into multiple public clouds to the edge. Uh, and, and, and most of the concerns we're seeing from customers is like, how do I consistently secure all of that uh, and protect both my apps and uh, my APIs? And we're excited because uh, we've launched a secure multi-cloud solution based on our distributed cloud platform that's specifically targeted at being able to provide uh, consistent security policy uh, end to end, no matter where the app is uh, running. So, uh, and, yeah. and customers are really resonating with the idea of one policy goes anywhere that I take my app to. Brian, I want to dig in, because you're the product guy, you got the keys to the kingdom on the features, the customer, the engineering side of it. This is like a huge thing, because the, the, the bad guys have to use the network. There are footprints that are laying on. They got a, the network is the ultimate source of truth, but also it's an opportunity on both sides, the bad guys and the good guys. This has been a big team, we've been covering this. Everyone kind of knows that already. Yeah. So, but the word distributed computing comes back more and more when we talk about the current cloud evolution. You know, today I'm, we reported that Dropbox is laying some people off like everybody else, but that, I, that's important because they were the first cloud native, first SaaS kind of crop of companies that were born in the cloud. Yeah. And they're laying off, so, you have this, so that's points to this next gen cloud. Okay, yeah. where networking's going to be a big part of it. What is the, that piece of the puzzle for distributed cloud? Because if you've got cl public cloud, say AWS, and you've got on-premise, and now the edge, whether it's industrial or uh, a windmill, that's distributed computing. Yeah. So cloud ops has to run seamlessly in all that. That's the current definition of cloud. Mm -hmm. Why does F5's product work well in that environment when someone says, hey, why, how do you work in a distributed way? Well, we have you know, our own uh, regional edge infrastructure, uh, but we also offer you know, what we call a customer edge node as well. So we're able to uh, put uh, our services anywhere the customer is, whether it's in a public cloud, in their private cloud, uh, they can run in conjunction meshed with our infrastructure or, or just completely in their own mesh. Uh, but they get all the security services brought along with it and, and one of the big things with that is that it's, uh, it enables them to tap into the AI and ML analytics complex that we have powering our web app firewall and API security. Talk about that, the AI piece, what's, what's in there? Well, traditionally, you know, we've done well at network security. We've gotten good at five tuple ACLs, but application security has been, and API security has been far too complex to really effectively secure it at, at massive scale. Uh, so thousands of policies of you know, web app firewall or API security uh, can, can be very onerous to operate. Uh, but when you get you know, AI and ML involved, you can do the analysis not only of the application, but also of, of potentially malicious user intent mm -hmm. uh, that makes it a lot easier to secure the application layer, which is, is, is vulnerable because it's complex and gets targeted more and more by the attacker. Yeah. Yeah, to add to it, I mean, I think that when we look at AI and ML, it's about protecting for things that haven't happened yet, yeah. or they're happening to you the first yeah. time, <laughs> right, looking at behavioral type character, uh, characteristics. So we use uh, all of the AI and ML uh, yeah. for discovery of vulnerabilities based upon behavior, things that aren't in a signature and kind of a, or a rule set in a traditional way. But the other thing we use it for is uh, doing API discovery, right? 
uh, and really path discovery for an application. So giving the customer really, really unique visibility, but then also understanding what's a normal behavior for that application, right? Are there new APIs that have popped up uh, that were unknown the day before, right? That's a concern, that's a potential security vulnerability that needs to be uh, This protected. is an operational impact, expand yeah. on that. I think that's a huge point. Because, and then there's, there's benefits there too and consequences for not getting it right. Talk about the ops impact of what you just said. Yeah, so the, so the, the, the ops impact, and, and it was actually came through a customer conversation Brian and I had yesterday, he says, uh, my app developers, right, they change their application and then they change the threat surface of the application without me as the security practitioner knowing it's going to happen. And so the operational impact is whether or not you've opened a door uh, to an intruder uh, without any protection. So, we, uh, so this particular customer is very interested in the idea that we have constant visibility of what is a new path in the application being able to discover that and being able to respond to it to make sure that the right security controls are in place. So operationally, yeah. it's about not only just having visibility, but it's also being able to understand if it's creating a vulnerability. And that's with the your safeguard piece that you were just talking yeah. about. Right, yeah. right. Talk about the, the um, F5 solution. You brought this up before you came on camera about Kubernetes, because you guys have a standard way to give policy or layer yeah. three through seven yeah. networking <laughs> Stability, <laughs> <laughs> what's the word? Uh, reliability or performance. Take, take us through, this is a huge point, because this, yeah. this is a big feature. Yeah, so in our distributed cloud, uh, in our distributed cloud platform, uh, we have a multitude of different ways to deliver our services. But fundamentally, if you have compute, networking, and storage, you can run one of the nodes for our distributed cloud platform, what we call a customer, uh, customer edge node. And you can deploy that on bare metal, you can deploy that on a hypervisor, any flavor of hypervisor, but we can also deploy as a pod inside of a vaulty vendor Kubernetes infrastructure, right? So if you are all end-to-end -end Kubernetes, you deploy our customer edge node as a pod inside your clusters, at that point in time you have layer three through seven capabilities for that cluster. So you provide all the inner networking capabilities with uh, layer three, four controls like fast ACLs. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do uh, uh, all your uh, uh, load balancing function, uh, fun, uh, functions in inside and out of the cluster. Uh, and then we can provide a full application security stack, uh, stack for web and API uh, web and API protection. So now all of a sudden a Kubernetes node is really part of your infrastructure yeah. and has complete visibility and control. And who through. deploys that? The developer doesn't touch it, or is there the it's network it, ops it, do it? Do they so provision it themselves? No. So the, it can be deployed as part of your tool chain for for deployment. Uh, and uh, and by default, the policy that's defined for your uh, for your organization gets automatically applied as part of that provisioning. So even uh, even those that are in operation or DevOps uh, don't have to have security expertise to deploy uh, the service securely for your application. So the jobs to put a network layer in there. For, for the yeah, there's full network layer, yep. Got yep. It. Okay, great. Now talk about the distributed application deployments that you're seeing for multi-cloud, because this comes up a lot. So what is multi-cloud? We call it super cloud because it's, it's multiple environments, but it's app related, it's heavy duty application support needed. So you got network to app security needs but it's on a hyperscaler cloud or an on-premise or edge or another cl multiple clouds. Essentially it's, it's multi, I don't say multi-vendor, multi-environment, but we'll call it multi-cloud. How do you guys look at that? What's, what's, what's your view of the definition and how does it render itself into a solution? Well, so our, our view of it, it's, it's fundamental to modern applications. The modern applications are, are, you know, first of all, we know broken into microservices, and uh, sometimes those microservices are running across a variety of different, uh, variety of infrastructure. And uh, so, th the way we've built our solution is, is that, irregardless of where you deploy, uh, we can provide the same visibility and control end to end, including if you move application workloads between clouds or between cloud or on-premise, uh, on-premise the edge. So it's, it's actually core to the way we've built our distributed cloud platform is the thought that. In the name, the goal of a distributed cloud platform is to service distributed applications. And our view of everything is everything will be distributed, much harder to secure, so, so also fundamental to the way we do it yeah. is to include security in everything we do. It seems like very political in the sense of the cloud players because now that cloud moves into this next gen, you're seeing, again, you're seeing examples of it with people building on top of clouds that don't have any capex that have ecosystems, they have people developing on it, so you have Apple, like a robust app 
modern app development environment. Mm -hmm. Seeing that everywhere. That's going to make more complexity for the network. This is a really important point, and it's almost as if the cloud should just look at themselves as already won. You know, so it's like they've already kind of won. I mean, there's only four, right? Three, yeah. maybe four, five, okay, maybe three, two. Okay. Yeah. Microsoft and Azure. And Google's coming up up and up fast, which yeah. I like what they're doing. But but generally, they've already won. Mm -hmm. So what's the issue? Like it, customers that I talk to all have multiple clouds, either by default from acquisitions or by accident, they didn't even know they had them. So like it's kind of like an environment, no one, I don't think they woke up and said, we're gonna build a multi-cloud strategy. Mm. I mean, that's doesn't really, I haven't seen any of that going on other than that they've inherited the, yeah, the why cloud. Why don't you take it from know. a security perspective yeah, yeah, and I'll take it from a visibility and perspective. Am I, am yeah, so, all so, wet on this or no? Yeah, so I, I mean, I think, uh, you know, part of this is just the, the, the pace of modern app development is, is so much faster than anything we've ever seen before. New apps, new APIs are, are just popping up all the time in, in, in a variety of different uh, uh, modes of operation and business value, right? So the thing of it is, is that that's happening so fast, sometimes the developers are selecting the cloud uh, without consulting their networking or, or security counterparts, and then in so doing, you know, dragging network, uh, making decisions about what are the security tools they're going to use because they're going to yeah. select, you know, whatever AWS or Azure yeah. offers as security tools and networking tools. So we're really seeking to solve that problem for the network and security operators to say, hey, we're, we're not going to get in your way of choosing whatever cloud you want for, with yeah. that might be most suitable for your application or API, but we are going to ask that you, you know, standardize on, on, on a certain type of uh, security policy and, uh, and, and networking capability. So you're, you're basically saying, your clients saying, don't fight the tie, it's coming. The no. Developers are driving everything. Okay, right. that's pretty much, we've been reporting right. that. You guys would agree with the developers yeah, yes. in charge. Yeah. Yeah. Real, from an application productivity standpoint. Okay, so then that means that ops have to flex yeah. to that, enable that, guardrail it, policy, yeah. things that are yeah. automate, these are known yeah. concepts yeah. in networking. Um, okay, I, I see that, yeah. check, awesome. Why F5, what do you guys do differently than the competition? What's your approach? Why are you guys winning? Can you take us through that? Yeah, so uh, you know, simply, you know, we have a, you know, just a, a tremendously long positive heritage in delivering, you know, very sophisticated application visibility solutions, control solutions with our big IP load balancing product. And so we've we've taken all of those learnings and with our distributed cloud platform, you know, we've applied that to more modern applications mm -hmm. that are broken into microservices and distributed across uh, multiple clouds. So first of all, you know, our expertise in layer seven at the application layer, and, and uh, not only for delivering yeah. reliability and, uh, and, and at scale, but also securely, is what we're applying to the distributed cloud platform. I think why we're winning is uniquely we, uh, we in a lot of customer environments, they're spread across multiple clouds, they can't see their environment. They don't yeah. know where their vulnerability is. So the first thing we do in our solution, and I think it blows most customers away, is we can give them end-to-end -end visibility of their entirety of the environment, yeah. right? And then the second thing is because we have visibility and we can put ourselves within the data path end-to-end, -end, we can also provide all the security controls yeah. that they need yeah. to protect their applications. And I'll give you an example. Um, uh, you know, we have customers in multiple clouds they use the native security tools in those clouds and then a security event like Log4j comes up. Now they have to go to each one of those individual native tools to configure a policy to be able to block a Log4j attack. Mm -hmm. With our distributed cloud solution, yeah. right, they have a policy that's in one place irregardless of the cloud that they've deployed the application on. They just have to change the policy in one place or even better yet, they get an automatic policy update or behavioral protection that protects all applications so across multiple clouds. So I hear you correctly, you got three through seven stack, that's yep. key, one key point, not just three or four, just yep. all, all layers. And you're end to end, you're embedded. Yep. So you're just mm -hmm. building an abstraction layer architecturally to see the data path, right? Right. right. I mean, yeah, so if you, that's if you like if you think of a customer, it's an architectural yeah. advantage. Yeah, yeah, if you think a customer, with the layers. you yeah. think of a customer proudly showing their knock uh, years yeah. ago, where they would yeah. show their big network map, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's very hard to show a network map anymore. Yeah. Well, we actually, out of the box, once you deploy our solution, we'll give you a full network yeah. map, all the way to layer seven of your particular applica uh, your particular application. That's really unique. That visibility that we yeah, provide. Yeah, and you give you make it more agile yeah. for Absolutely. folks while maintaining. So it's an architectural decision. 
Yeah. And you got the product to back it up. That yeah. seems to be the key. And yeah. now you got the new AI yeah. over the top. Right, and I think the other reason we're winning is when you look at other web app and API protection vendors who are trying to offer you know, layer 3, 4 DDoS mm -hmm. protection, bot defense, web app firewall, and API security, uh, you look at them and they're mostly rooted in a CDN platform. Yeah. Whereas we're coming at it from, from this multi-cloud networking platform, like managed Kubernetes environment, uh, that yeah. is designed from the ground up to address these new challenges. So we're bringing you know, not only our pedigree in application security and delivery to this new platform, but we're doing it in, in a way that you know, other, you know, other vendors in the same space yeah. can't uh, yeah. when and it comes get, to security. You get the full suite, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah. So this is kind of like, a, remember the old days, moving up the stack, uh, Cisco always got um, hammered for that. Like they could never move up the stack. So the point solution layered products are probably eating the dust right now in this market <laughs> because they can't have multiple views and yeah. they can't make the claim to be architecturally relevant in the constellation of the deployment. Yeah. Whether you're putting it into Kubernetes pod or putting it in an app or in Azure. Yeah, right? yeah. Or even putting it in a traditional data center. So look, it is it is becoming a platform play, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, and and I know that there's some positives, and sometimes yeah. customers perceive some negatives about being part of a part of a platform. Um, but when you're doing what we're doing, we provide a layer, layer three through seven stack. It's obvious that we're going to add more and more services to that stack, more and more controls, uh, whether it be visibility, network layer yeah. controls, security uh, security controls. But what we're going to do is give you a simple way to deploy all those things with a uh, similar look and feel and capability that's consistent yeah. across all those services. So we're, we're going, you know, we're going after somebody that is looking to lower their total cost of ownership by yeah. having a simpler way to do things. Yeah, and at the end of the day, they got to be secure. So the old perimeter's gone, but now the perimeter's replaced by embedded architecturally relevant stack. Yeah, yeah. virtualizing the perimeter yeah. is maybe a way to think about yeah, it, right? Like, like, yeah. like we can make the perimeter, the, as long as you're connected, the perimeter yeah. exists and you have control of the, the perimeter. The perimeter is always changing and it's dynamic, it's just the packet flows. Yeah. However, you, but you guys ensure that because you got the end to end, you got the suite, and three through seven gives you right. guys different yeah. approach. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Yeah, I think this is going to be back to the programmable network. Remember the old kind yeah. of like self-healing? Sure. Yeah. Remember the old yeah. self-healing network, it's programmable. Yeah. But yeah. now you've got APIs and you've got Gen AI. It's actually happening right now. And then yeah. data is going to be interesting. And, and one of the things I'll, I'll end on with you guys, get your thoughts, because since we're you know, looking at the, at the current landscape and trying to project to the future is, I put this out there during the KubeCon developer conference, is that developers have, are flipping the script. You guys highlighted that earlier. What if they flip the script on how to program the data? and then the network. So developers are kind of shifting left and kind of being enabled, but what if they can decide how to program the data? Mm -hmm. Meaning that means where it's stored, how data is stored and managed. Uh, most of the database folks handle that piece. Oh, yeah. What if the developers could decide where data is stored? And so this brings up kind of a rethinking of what you guys are, how you guys are looking at it, which is you're, you're not changing networking, you're just rethinking it a bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? That's kind of what's happening. Yeah, yeah, and look, I mean, I think you're hitting on a key point with with uh, some of the, the privacy laws, data sovereignty, data localization, um, you know, having a having a global footprint of an infrastructure, uh, and being able to yeah. see traffic uh, globally, and being able to manage traffic globally, you know, yeah. gives us a very unique way to be able to deal with any customer requirements yeah. about uh, they have about where their data goes yeah. uh, as it transit the as it transit the. I'm a big believer in de facto standards. If you look at all the major success stories over the years. Things become de facto, mm -hmm. and you enable people to do their jobs. Right now, from here and the security and network and then app space, people just want to get busy doing their job. Right here, yep. it's de threat detection, be prevention, remediation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They don't want to spend time configuring con machines. Yeah, that's yeah. that, and you guys enable that by having yeah. some reliability. Yeah, and and one of the things that that you know we're really bringing to bear on the distributed cloud platform when it comes to the the security component is that our our customers that are onboarding they're going into blocking mode right away, um, which is which is something that not 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 a lot of our competitors can claim, and uh, we can do it not just for you know traditional web applications but for APIs as well. So we're we're incredibly API fluent. Uh, which I think you know, we all acknowledge that's where things are going. We're going to say apps in the future, yeah. but we're really <laughs> going to mean APIs. Yeah. Um, that's that, and, th and that's really how we're going to keep pace. Yeah, and, and speed and, and agility is key, because if something, say, a breach is going on, you can look at critical systems and go sequence into, okay, shut yeah. down those, let's keep yeah. those up and running, let's right. block and contain. Yeah. It's very much network is, is the key strategy piece yeah. of it, big piece of the puzzle, the piece. Yeah. yeah. 
Guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Uh, F5, great stack, three, three through seven layers across end-to-end -end data suite of, of infrastructure for developers. It's cloud native, multi-cloud, super cloud. This is theCUBE here at RSA. I'm John Furrier, your host. We'll be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>